Hey guys, I hope everyone's doing great today. Uh, what we're going to focus on right now is how to create a small group system. Now, uh, it could also be called a, a discipleship system. You could call it a Sunday school system. The only reason I chose uh, to talk about small groups as opposed to using the word discipleship is that when it comes to discipleship, the most effective discipleship I've seen are people who are in your church, you know, they're listening to preaching and they're you know, studying God's Word, and then they realize, man, I want more. So they seek out someone uh, who will pour into them and invest in them. Where what's great about small groups is sometimes small groups, um, the discipleship happens accidentally instead of intentionally. Uh, for instance, if you, you know, you may have couples small groups, and a wife drags her husband to small group, and he's there, you know, kicking and screaming. And then over the course of time, as he's uh, begins getting connected and he's in a community and he's around people, uh, then discipleship begins to happen. He begins to change. And I used to uh, lead small group and think, oh, it was the information I was teaching, uh, the way I'm instructing people, that's what's, uh, that's what's going to disciple them. And then what I realized over time was what was really changing them and helping them and making a difference in people's lives was the community. Uh, it was very, very, very rare that someone came back and said, oh, uh, it's just something you taught me and it's really changing me. They would come back and say, man, it's really been great being connected with these people. I feel like I've grown so much. And that's what small groups do. They provide the opportunity for community. Um, and throughout, uh, in community, people just change. It's even hard to explain why that happens outside of the fact that God just designed us for community, to be relational people. And when we're around people who are growing, we just start growing. Uh, my name is Ben Crawshaw. Uh, I work here at the Rocket Company. There's a picture of my wife, Holly, uh, my daughter, Lila, sitting down on the chair. And there's Esme, the, the bad sleeper. Yeah, my wife's holding her. That's, that's her right there. Um, so let's talk about the small group system and how to create one. I uh, hope you can see this well. I'm going to walk through these pieces. So if you can't, I'll emphasize each piece. But here's the cycle of a small group system. Leader recruitment kickoff. We'll talk about that. Then you go to leader training. Then small group Sunday, that's step three. Four is group placement. Then you launch groups, appreciate leaders, you take a break, then relaunch. All right, so we're going to dive right in. Uh, but, but before that, let me say this. Before you launch small groups, build a strong leadership base. The mistake I've uh, seen is that people or, or church leaders will announce small groups. They'll promote small groups. Uh, they'll see how many small groups they have, and then they'll start looking for leaders. Now, some of that may happen. You may have a surprising number of people who are interested in small groups, and you may have to scramble and find more leaders, but I would do that in reverse. I would start with leadership, at least have a, a base of small group leaders in place, and then you can launch small groups. Now you have the foundation built. You can begin building the house. So let's talk about that leader recruitment kickoff. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, some places where you look for small group leaders, uh, or where you find them, you recruit them. In a church service, you talk about it, um, maybe as part of a, a, a sermon on community, as part of your announcement to say, hey, small groups are going to launch um, in the fall or whatever, but right now, what we're looking for are people who are interested in being small group leaders. So they don't sign up to be leaders, they sign up expressing their interest in being small group leaders. We'll talk about why in a minute. And then the church bulletin. Um, the church bulletin can, can be a follow-up announcement or people who are just perusing it can say, hey, we're looking for great small group leaders for our you know, upcoming fall kickoff. Write your name and email address here um, if you're interested. Phone number could be optional if they want to do that as well. Uh, information table. Uh, hey, you could go back to the information table if you have any questions. Again, if you want to make this as part of your church service announcement. Um, or if you have a, an information table at your church that just has, you know, various flyers or information on different departments laying out, that can have one that says, yes, exclamation point. I would, I'm interested in being a small group leader. They could fill that out. Again, email and then phone number would be optional. Um, and so these are three ways that you begin really raising, uh, raising the flag uh, with people. Uh, also, you could email out to your church lists. One of the things I strongly suggest is updating your church email database. And then if you need leaders, if you're in a place where you said, hey, I was hoping to have eight to ten small group leaders before we launch group, then I think you can call people on the phone and say, hey, I would love to talk to you. I'd love to invite you to do something. 
Uh, face-to-face is even better. Hey, let's sit down and have coffee, or can we meet for about 15 minutes after church on Sunday? And you sit down and just say, hey, here's the vision for our small groups. We're looking for a place uh, where people you know, can move from rows to circles, is what we used to say at North Point, that um, they can go from just listening to sermons to talking about them and processing, processing what's going on in their lives. We're looking for a place where you know, married couples... Um, they can go and they can be around other married couples and they can learn what it's like to live in community and they can learn from other couples and, and see what other couples are doing in their marriage. And so you cast vision, you say, hey, we're not looking for perfect people. Um, we're looking for, for people that we can trust to lead. And your name came to my mind. Would you be interested in being a small group leader? Now, one other thing I want to say about all of this is any places where you're making announcements and they can fill out cards to say, yes, I'm interested, or they drop them off the information table or drop them in your offering bucket, um, you want to have a response email ready. And so this email goes back out to them that uh, schedules a time to get together. So you want to have your response email ready so that everyone who, who writes in the card, yes, I'm interested in being a small group leader, you can hit them immediately back up with that follow-up email. And that follow-up email, this is very important, is to schedule a conversation, a face-to-face, one-on-one conversation, either with you, a, a key volunteer who, who's a leader in your small group ministry, or another staff member, and you sit down with them face-to-face. And um, before we get to this, uh, this kind of this covenant time, there are, are uh, small group uh, leader interview questions and we're going to provide those for you. We don't have time to go through those 13 questions that we've provided. Um, and we'll give those to you because we don't have time to go through those. But if you go through that, that small group interview and then you say, hey, I'll get back to you um, in a week. Or I'll get back to you in two days. Um, th- then, And you feel like, all right, this is a great leader for our environment. This is a, a leader who's right for what we're trying to do. Um, then you're going to have them sign a covenant. Now, this is not a legal contract. It's just a, it's something that they will sign to kind of give this sense of uh, officialness, you know, that, that gives this sense of like, yeah, I'm taking this seriously. And so I'm going to walk through these quickly. I will strive to grow and remain committed to my walk with Christ. I will be a member of this church who is supportive of its mission and vision. Here's why this is important. is because you don't want small group to become a place where people create a soapbox. And again, the small group leader interview questions um, are, are going to help you kind of sense that and uh, spot that ahead of time. And so you don't want small group to be a place where, well, I don't know, what do you think about so? And I'm, I'm kind of unhappy with our children's ministry and I don't like our student pastor. You don't want it to be that. And so you want to communicate to people, hey, I'm not saying that you think our church is perfect, uh, but here's what I don't want. I don't want factions created. Um, and this is rare, but you've been in church for a while. You've seen it. And so that's part of, of what your small group leaders represent, an extension of the mission and vision of your church. I will live my life in a way that's worthy of being called a leader, including what I post on social media. So again, Facebook posts that rant about stuff that are derogatory towards things that are so political that Um, You know, it's creating controversy even within your church. They need to be careful of that. I will prioritize my group and do my best to lead them towards a more connected walk with God and others. And that really is is about prioritizing your group is really about uh, just saying, hey, however long we do this, we're going to stay committed. And I I personally think, um, you know, 12 weeks is is a good time frame for small groups. Some uh, some people would say six months or nine months. Um, what you want to do is have a beginning and end time so that uh, if, if people are leaders and over time they're like, man, I just didn't realize how busy I was getting or something changes or um, there are people who want to enter groups, but all the groups are locked in for this you know, extended period of time. Um, I think that it's good to have them in 12, you know, 12 week, six month, nine month. You, you may say, hey, we're going to go a year for each. That's great, too. Uh, but I would put beginning and end dates to those uh, because of stuff like this, prioritizing your group. You have leaders who can prioritize group leading um, you know, for three months or six months, but they can't do it for two years. And then finally, I will maintain boundaries, but also joyfully sacrifice time and energy for my group. So you're saying, hey, we're, we're asking you to be a father or a mother first, a husband or a wife first. We're asking you to stay committed uh, to the people that you lead um, but, but also, you know, understand that this is something that you need to be committed to for this period of time. Um, and then they sign it from there. 
So at that point, <clears throat> when you have leaders established, you're going to do leader training. And again, this is the other thing that we really don't have time to get into right now, but we'll provide that for you. And leader training is really you walk them through uh, what I call the seven L's of leading. And we'll provide that for you because we, we don't have time uh, right now in this training to go through it. It would take way too long. And really what you're doing is you're just kind of guiding people through the role of a small group leader. Um, it's not a pastor. It's not a preacher. It's a, it's a support team. It's a facilitator. It's a, uh, a someone who's creating a joyful, uh, safe environment. It's somebody who's looking to leverage people and, um, you know, and, and, and spotting people who want to be more committed to the church. It's really a connecting point for a lot of people into your church. Uh, you're pushing people towards their families to be better husbands and wives and friends, and, um, and we'll provide that for you so you can go through that training. So uh, they've signed the covenant. You've done the interview questions. They've signed the covenant. You've done the training. And so now you want to have small group Sunday. And what this is, now you're launching to the whole congregation. Now, again, they've heard you make the announcements because you were looking for leaders. Uh, you've kind of, uh, you know, ahead of time, let them know it's coming. We're going to talk about small groups. But now you're going to have a big small group Sunday. You want to make this feel like it's an event um, where, you know, there's, there's stuff around your church that points towards it connected or together or something like that. Some name that represents Oh, this is, this is vision, and you want to preach about that, or you want whoever's your primary communicator to preach about uh, community and small groups that Sunday. Because really what you have the opportunity to do from the pulpit that day is to, uh, to give vision to it. Because, you know, like a lot of things in church, people think, oh, yeah, I should do that. Yeah, I should give. I should get in a small group. I should serve. I should. I should. Uh, but when you connect it to vision, it's like, man, why wouldn't I? Uh, God designed us for community. Um, man, we, we thrive when we're around people. Hey, we can, you can just make some friends. You know, if you, you've been, only lived here for a year or two years and you're like, man, I don't really don't have anybody to talk to about stuff that's happening in my life. Small groups, that's a great opportunity. Even people who are no longer in small groups together, they still are great friends because that time together, they grew closer. They can call and text each other when stuff is happening. Mentors, um, mentor relationships are formed. Uh, couples are going on trips together. Uh, it, so small group Sunday, you're casting vision as to uh, why God designed us for community. And then you're clearly making an invitation to people um, to express their interest in being in small groups. Um, and so it's the same thing. Yes, I want to be in a group. And so they're going to fill out a card too. And this is important because then you're going to have group placement that you're going to go through. Um, so people who are interested, they, they fill out a card. Doesn't have. It could just be their name, their email address, and options on uh, what type of group. So that it may be um, married groups, single guys groups, single ladies groups. That's it. Because you may have, um, you know, uh, or, you know, you can have the option of a ladies group and a men's group. Uh, so there may be guys who, um, you know, their, their wife doesn't want to be in a group or they want to be in a group where they can talk about guy-specific stuff. So you have men's groups uh, or, or ladies who they can't get their husband to join a small group. So they're not going to go to a married couples group. They're going to go to a ladies group. So um, married couples group, men's group, women's group. Um, and uh, that's that's really it. You can, you can get more detail from there if you want to, college age. But um, I, I do like the idea of, um, you know, multi-generational people in a small group. You may differ on that. I like the idea of uh, someone who's single and in their 20s, being around ladies in their 30s and 40s, even though, you know, some of the conversation is about kids and, you know, they're kind of rolling their eyes a little bit. But it's still, I just think that, you know, cross-generational uh, just community, it, it's so powerful in people's lives. Uh, but you can segment those however you see uh, best, depending on the culture of your church and, and the needs that you see in front of you. And then you want to have group placement. So simply what you're doing is you're taking those cards and, and you may say, we're going to talk about it for a month. We're going to collect cards for a month. It's not just going to be for one Sunday. Small group Sunday, that's the big kickoff. And then you keep announcing it for the next two or three weeks. Then you need to begin forming group placement. So you look at the leaders that you have, you look at the cards and, and how they shake out. Hey, we need four ladies groups um, and we need one married couples group. 
uh, or vice versa, and we need one men's group, or hey, we have all of these married couples, so there's like six groups, and then we have one men's group and one ladies only group. Uh, you, you just want to kind of move them around. This takes a little bit of time. It takes some prayer. It takes some effort and energy thinking about your leadership, thinking about where people live. Uh, you can even make that an option on the um, when they sign up that they're interested in being in a, a small group so you can put people together geographically. Um, this is a puzzle piece. There's no smooth way for me to explain this to you other than just you have to look at those cards, sit down with a team of people, and you may have people on your staff who are just great at logistical placement with stuff like that. Uh, they can whip stuff uh, like that together really fast. But you want to do group placement, and then you want to communicate to people um, when their small groups happen. You want to launch them. So you start with the leader, and you just say, hey, when, um, when is this going to work best for you for your group to meet? Um, or your church may say, hey, th we do these small groups every Wednesday night. It's part of our church service. So that way it's, hey, this is set. It's a set time. Uh, we do them on Sunday afternoons or you may have them happen, happen at random times. And this is what I've seen in all the churches that I've been involved with and worked at is you really start with the leader because if the leader can't prioritize it as part of their schedule, you're already in trouble. So the leader establishes, hey, this is when um, these are some options of when I can do small group. And then what you do is you put the, that leader in charge of communicating with the people who's, who have been placed in his or her group. And so that leader reaches out to them and says, hey, here are the two or three options for when we can meet what works best for you. Now, the tricky part here is there may be three out of the four married couples can meet at a certain time and the fourth married couple can't. So then you have to... to you know, they have to connect the pieces to other married small groups and say, okay, you can fit in the time frame they've allotted. And so they have to move over to a different group. This is all kind of a puzzle piece that takes a little bit of time. Um, or sometimes you just say, again, you pick a time uh, that's pretty universally uh, open for people. Like go to lunch on Sunday and then we meet for small group. Uh, something like that. Yeah, I may cut into NFL football time, but, you know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna meet. Uh, while we eat lunch after church and then everybody can get home and take naps or, or whatever they do. Uh, you can pick times that are you know pretty much open for most people. But here's the truth, is that everybody's busy and kids have sports on Sundays now and there's so much stuff going on that it, you know it's probably going to be impossible to find a time that works for everyone. And that's just the reality of launching small groups. That's the, the, the messiness of community. Um, but I think the best system is to let the leader communicate with the people you place in his or her group, and they can begin working together to form a time that works best for them. Um, now, as, as the small groups have launched and you've worked through all the puzzle pieces of people expressing interest, group placement, and then launching groups, figuring out times and places, you want to begin appreciating leaders. And so uh, one of the best things that you should do is keep a small group leader inventory database, all right? That's a very long way of just saying it could be a Word document. And if you have 10 leaders, you just put the 10 leaders' names on the Word document. And the inventory is simply you just saying this is when their group meets, so you know. And then as you meet with them, and so let's say over the course of a six-month small group, six months of small groups, that you would meet with them two times every other month, um, or that would be three times, three times every other month, um, and you just check in on them, or you catch up with uh, catch up with them, or you could just say, hey, we're going to do it for a year, so you'll meet them quarterly, so four times throughout the course of the year, you sit down, or you have a staff member sit down um, with these small group leaders, and um, you, you schedule the checkups with them, this is part of being a small group leader, these don't have to take a long time, and again, you can do them after church, or you can do them before church, or on Wednesday nights, and you just go through these questions, or you can have some of your own. How are you doing personally? Uh, how are you doing spiritually? And it doesn't have to seem like it's a counseling session. You can make this casual. Hey, how are things going in your life? You know, spiritually, how you feel about things? Uh, tell me about the group. What's going on in the group? Um, hey, are there any wins that we can share or celebrate? Now, this is key, okay? Because as a church leader, um, sometimes you just don't feel like you're winning, right? And you want to cast vision and you want to connect it to these stories. You're just not hearing them. And these small group leaders, they're hearing stuff that's happened. Man, this couple uh, in my small group, like, man, they've been coming to this church and they're, man, they are growing. And, and they really point to, to this church and their kids, their, their kids love student, uh, the children's ministry. 
All right, well, that's big for you as a leader because then you can go back to your children's pastor and say, hey, um, you know that couple, they were telling their small group leader how much their kids love children's ministry. That's a huge win. Or you celebrate it for them in, in staff meeting and say, um, hey, let's all just give, you know, uh, Cheryl a hand because the, uh, so-and-so, they're going to group, their kids love children's ministry. Sh- she's doing a great job. This couple is growing because you've done a great job in children's ministry. So you see there how you can get a win from a small group leader that in turn will allow you to cast vision and appreciate people uh, on your staff, on your team. You may hear about stories and say, hey, um, would you mind if asking them if they would be willing to share just a little bit of this on a Sunday morning? Um, because sometimes, man, the best communicators of your church are sitting in pews. They're not standing up in the pulpit. And I don't mean you're not a great communicator. I just mean they can communicate vision um, in a way that you can't because they've been beneficiaries of the vision of your church. And so it's just great. It's great for the just morale of your church to hear from people um, out there. And other people, they look at them and say, oh, they're not the professional Christian you know, staff member. They're just like me. And they've really grown. Wow, I, maybe I can do it too. That's the beauty of stories and how they cast vision. And you can find those through small group leaders. And then you say, is there anything I can do to help you or your group? Um, and this is you just serving the leaders around you, being a servant leader to them. Maybe small practical things. Uh, they may say, no, we're, we're good. Um, but it, it, the que- just asking the question is great for them. And then more importantly, keep telling them thank you. You can send text, handwritten notes. I would schedule this uh, throughout the course of however long your groups go. Just, hey, texting, just saying, hey, I'm, I'm so grateful that you're a small group leader. Just thinking about you today and wanted to say thank you. Celebrate stories. Uh, that's what we just talked about. But uh, publicly, uh, privately and publicly, you can recognize them. Hey, I want to put 10 names up on the screen. These are our small group leaders. These, these are people who are taking time, and they're not full-time staff members. They're not even paid staff members here. They're just taking time to lead groups. Let, let's give them a hand, just stuff like that. And uh, you find that you can just never say thank you enough. So make sure throughout the course of small groups, there's going to be some messy things that happens because that's what happens when you get human beings together. But make sure you're appreciating and saying thank you, not just thinking it, but saying thank you to your small group leaders. And then you want to take a break and relaunch. Um, And man, summertime, it's hard. It's hard to have small groups in the summer. Um, The holidays, Christmas time, it's impossible to have small group then. So you want to have some breaks built in. Even if small groups last longer than a year, you still want to have some breaks you want to relaunch. Relaunch gives an opportunity for people who are like, I am miserable. I cannot wait for this to be over. We're not going to hold you. You're not going to be in prison to our small group. You know, you can, you can reset. You can try something different. Um, but more importantly, for people who are just seeing the wins and the celebration, and they're hearing the stories. Now, when you take a break and you relaunch, that's an opportunity for them to jump in. People who have grown in small groups and now they're ready to be leaders. This is an opportunity for them as you start recruiting leaders for your next season of small groups for them to step up. That's discipleship. I showed up at small group because my wife drugged me there and then I changed through community and now I'm ready to lead a small group. That's powerful when something like that happens. So uh, again, guys, I know we've had to fly through some of this information for the sake of time. We'll provide some additional resources that you guys can take advantage of. Um, but you, you, this cycle is, is you do it once and you're going to learn so much. So if you've never launched small groups before, you, you launch this cycle one time and then you just take notes. What did we learn? What did we do well? What can we do be, uh, better next time? And I think you'll be uh, amazed by how quickly uh, this becomes just a vibrant part of your church. So thank you guys. And we look forward to partnering with you on anything we can do to help your church.